So ladies and gentlemen, I am actually in Denver, Colorado, and I'm on South Cherokee Street, and I am sitting in a super cool, would you say this is a cafe, a restaurant? How do you, a bar, Dakin, how do you classify the white whale room? It is kind of hard to classify. I usually say we are a coffee by day, cocktails by night establishment. That's perfect, I get that. And super cool, by the way. Thank you. I see that you have been motivated or inspired by Moby Dick here. Yes. I was an English teacher for 12 years, so I think nice. that's super cool. Yeah. First of all, tell everybody what your passion is exactly. Um, I would say my passion is taking care of people, I guess, but in the simplest terms. Um, creating experiences for people uh, well-crafted experiences is what I like to do. And you know what, I, I got a little bit of that catering too, and we got here late, mm -hmm. and we had a really long day today. We just came from the symphony. What time is it right now? It's probably it's 11 o'clock. Is it midnight? Yeah. We're doing a midnight interview here in Denver, mm -hmm. but now we're here with you, and honestly, the sandwiches that you crafted for us, and I use the word crafted very seriously, the drinks you crafted for us, super special like this isn't you know your run of the mill so your passion and the care that you take you can see it from the second you walk in here thank you and i could see it in the food that you served us and we each got three different things plus you brought out you know mm -hmm. um, some pimento grilled cheese with pickles on it, I think, which was amazing. Yeah, I started making you dessert, but we, we had to get started, so that's for after. <laughs> well, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the drinks even were really different and, mm -hmm. and so delicious. And I can taste, like, you're very gentle in the way you prepare things, and, and it com really translates well. Good. I'm glad it translates. But it's funny. Yeah, go ahead. You say that they're so different because really what we try to do here is uh, is classics. So these are classics that people, in our opinion, should know and any good bartender should be able to make. So what we're trying to do is give you a sort of uh, repertoire to draw on no matter where you walk in. So you're schooling me it. is what you're saying. Pretty much. Do you make Sazeracs here? Yes, ma'am. That's my favorite drink. Yeah. I didn't even know. We can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where did this start for you, though? And I know you have a partner. Rachel is your yes, partner? Yes, Rachel okay. is my Rachel partner. Rachel Gass? Uh, yeah, Rachel Gass. And uh, I mean, it starts a long time ago. Rachel and I grew up together in Tennessee. Um, we went to high school together uh, since we were in seventh grade. And so she went to UGA. I came to Colorado to go to CU film school. Um, pretty much immediately after we graduated. And then I hated school my whole life and not six months after graduating college, I was back in school, in culinary school. Uh, my mom. You know what, question. Mm -hmm. How did you feel going to culinary school versus any other schooling you had done? Um, I personally really enjoyed trade school. I mean, that's what culinary school is. It's right, like but, training to be a welder or yep. a carpenter or anything else. Uh, it's a specified skill set, so for a kid like me, my mind's bouncing off the walls. I need somewhere to focus my physical body and not just my mind, so culinary school is a great output for that. Um, whereas film school was very much the opposite. opposite. But film school is hands-on too, right? It was. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time or money to go into a production tract in the program, so it was very much based in theory and analysis. So pretty much watched films and analyzed them for three years. So right now in this stage of the game, and, and your restaurant is new, mm -hmm. how, how long have you guys been open? Just shy of three months. Right. About 11 weeks. So you guys, it's totally new. Mm -hmm. And so in this stage in the game, do you think this is where you should be? Or do you still have thoughts that had you been able to get in that other track, Mm -hmm. for film, that maybe film is where you should be? Actually, I produced my first film this past summer. Um, and so when you ask me, like, what's my passion, creating experience for, experiences for, for people really, in my mind, what I'm doing behind the bar or on a plate is no different than 
what a director is doing when they're ma really manipulating your mind to experience what they want you to experience. So it's interesting now that I'm kind of self-actualizing in the culinary world and behind the bar and everything, that film comes back into my life and I'm finding a way to make it work. Um, I'm such a fan though that everything we do just kind of coagulates mm -hmm. and then gathers and that's your purpose. Like we talked totally. about it. We talk about this all the time on the show. Like, you know, how your purpose in life is not a role that you play, but an, it, something you feel. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly to me what you're saying here. Whether yeah. you're doing this or you're doing that, this feeling of how you're servicing people in a specific way. Exactly. And being a producer on the scale of the movie that I worked on, you know, the very pretty low budget independent film, right? Uh, being a producer at a high level is pretty much like in title only position, right? Mm -hmm. Producer at the level of film I was working on, I was doing everything. If somebody needed water, I was getting it. If we needed to get the key grip over to fix this or that, or we got to mess with the generator and turn, you know, everything was done by producers and my co-producers. And so it was very much catering to the ensemble and I was also the caterer. So it was like <laughs> the whole production was very uh, personal for me because I just wanted to make sure that everyone had the best time and that they, my, my girlfriend is actually the writer director of the film. So I wanted to make sure that everyone knew the type of show she puts on and that they want to come back and work with her again. So how'd it go? Went well. We're going to hopefully uh, get an international premiere, maybe Locarno, maybe Berlinale. We have some people kind of fighting for us in our corner. Awesome. And then uh, we'll see what happens uh, domestically. Sundance. Maybe. Also, I mean, the bottom line is all you can say is that you have your chin in the game. Like, exactly. That's it. I had a uh, chef instructor in culinary school who went around the room and he asked everyone, why are you in culinary school? And then he asked them, what's your passion? And he said, I know that one day you're going to be able to do this and do that. And I told him that, you know, mine was film and then I'm, I also love to cook. So he was like, you're going to find out one day you'll be able to do both. And the reality is, like, you're around 30, right? Are you 20, around 30? So I'm older than 25. I actively, like, three years ago, I tried to forget how old I was. Dakin, I, I'm guessing you're near 30. I don't think, I don't know. <laughs> okay, anyway. I was born in 88. Bottom line is, is, all right, 88. <laughs> so it's uh, 12 plus 16. That's 28. <laughs> What? <laughs> anyway, so the point is that you're still early in the game. You know what I mean? You're early in the game still, and you're already figuring this out, mm -hmm. and you're already making these two worlds meet. So, and and you have things in the works, you know. Definitely. What do you think has been your greatest challenge with it all? <clears throat> um, myself, very hard on myself. Just constantly asking more, wanting more, not managing my ma time management is pretty hard. Um, you know, I can often have so many little things to do and get easily overwhelmed and then just not do anything. Um, that's a problem. But overall, I pretty much try to sack up and go for it. How are you pushing past that? Because you're making things happen. So yeah, how are you pushing past I'm that? pushing past it. Um, physical, like physical fitness is huge for me. Like I kind of struggle with uh, fairly regular bouts of depression and sadness. So if I can keep my brain chemistry naturally, naturally, uh, I guess, uplifted, then it really en enables me to be more productive and uh, just like more positive in my mind overall. So that's crucial. Um, going hand in hand with that, just like diet and everything, just like general lifestyle changes that I've had to make. Um, and then I have to force myself to sometimes do nothing. So what do you think though that you've learned about yourself through all of this? Um, that's a big question. 
I guess <laughs> I've learned that sticking to an ideal is totally worth it no matter how much um, resistance you get and I've learned that you you can't you absolutely cannot sit around and think about what everybody else is going to think about what you're doing um, and I've learned that people don't ask why enough you know what do you mean by an ideal tell us um so I don't know I've been someone in, on the other side of the bar like last week they told me that I was very obviously a purist um, so like this place is in, intended to be very humble um, that's why we don't create our own uh, cocktail concoctions for instance we I feel that there's so much to draw on throughout history that I can humbly offer you a Manhattan it's a Manhattan it's the way it's been served for you know decades so that's how I'm going to serve it to you I have no place just changing an ingredient slapping an ironic name onto it and calling it my own that's a very kind of dicey subject in the world of bartending um, there's been this renaissance of pride and creativity and, and, and it's great it's just for some reason not what I'm interested in and so when I told people that's what I was going to do. It was very much like, ah, you're too young. You just don't know. What do you think you you worked behind this bar or that bar for this much time, and you think you can just open up your own spot? Um, so, kind of an ideal. I mean, just having some something rooted in in who you are, and keeping that as a theme through through what you're trying to construct, you know. What kind of advice would you give people who want to do what you're doing? Like, what should, <laughs> what should they see their lives being like if they choose to do that? Um, they shouldn't, they should not do what I'm doing. Why? They should do what they want to do. Right, but if it's, if what you're doing rings true to them in mm -hmm. some way though. They yeah. say, I, you know, listen, I mean, throwing things back, which is what you're doing, you're doing mm -hmm. right throwback with yeah you know classics in a contemporary kind of atmosphere and mm -hmm. way which is super cool but that's i mean history repeating itself is yeah is nothing new and you're embracing that concept so if right. somebody wanted to do that with something that interests them whether it's a restaurant or something else yeah what would your advice be i would say look at who's done it before you and study them closely and don't repeat their mistakes. Repeat your, make your own mistakes. Mistakes are pretty much the most valuable thing you can, you can do. Who did you find as a mentor and how did you do that? Um, so we actually have a third partner. He's kind of, he's, he's the one who brought this opportunity to our doorstep and he is, the kind of silent partner, I guess you could say, but he was very interest, uh, involved in the construction of the interior and sort of coached us along the process of dealing with, you know, the city and everything. And um, he was a pretty big mentor and just kind of guiding me through those emotional obstacles that come with opening a, a business, I guess. So that was a, that was a big deal. Um, you know, my dad is very level-headed and kind of has no idea what the service industry is like. And so as a neutral third party, he could give me very unbiased uh, kind of character analysis of what's going on. And that was valuable. Um, but I don't know. I tend not to listen to people as well. So I don't know if I have, like, one mentor I could pick out and it's not going to be for everybody it's different mm -hmm. you know but all of that advice is great so what when you decided to take that leap and you and Rachel said let's do it what mm -hmm. was the first step so what what would you suggest people make that first step out to be uh, I, 
I don't know if there is a first step. It's just kind of like a first you're either, fall. You're either yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're either going for it or you're 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 wishy washy and you're not ever gonna do it. Uh, so you either gotta jump in and say this is my life now, or it's never gonna happen for you. You're gonna waste your time. So final thoughts for everybody. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Um, I know at the end of a long yeah, day. Yeah, thinking about, it, what am I thinking about? Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking tons of things all the time. Uh, I, think, uh, I think half the time, I don't know what the hell I'm doing or why the hell I'm doing it, but I honestly don't know what else I'd be doing. <laughs> Right I speak this language yeah. you're and I know my audience I have so many people who know exactly what you mean by this mm -hmm. and really well put <laughs> it's hard you know I, people ask me how's it going and I'm like we're paying the bills and paying our employees and so well which is major going. which yeah. is major at three months yeah totally to be I able think. to pay your bills at three months you totally know? And then I'm just like, yeah, it's good. I don't know what else I'd be doing. So I'd probably be busting my ass for someone else and they'd be getting all the cash. So I figured, why do I got to keep doing that? Exactly. So. Yeah, no, I hear you. All right. So for people to look you up, what's the best way to look up this place? Um, the White Whale Room, Denver, Colorado. It's on the Alameda Light Rail Station. If you ride the light rail or any public transit, pretty much every line comes through this platform. Um, Chase the White Whale is on Instagram. We have a Facebook page. The White Whale Room should pop up. Um, Denver, Colorado. I don't know. I love it. I had such a great time here already tonight. Thank and you. I mean, really fantastic food and drinks, unique, yeah. although it's classic, I know now. But uh, old yeah. school and awesome. Yeah. See, that's the intention is that we show you something that's already here that should be the norm i guess you know one of the things i tried was the sip and nip which mm -hmm. was three different things you could take and it reminded me of how my husband will sometimes have whiskey mm -hmm. and like a little side of coke yeah and it reminded me of that so I, I didn't even know that i was flashing back so yeah that's what it comes from it comes from basically like the, the boiler maker like having a nip of booze and a sip of something else and it's really designed for the commuters so that they can knock something back quick and get on the train and go. So. Well, it yeah. was delicious. Good. And um, I want to thank you too. You know, we're on this 50 state tour and, yeah. and we're just taking a, a chance to kind of in the similar stage of game that you're in. Yeah, it's Thank awesome. you so much for hosting us at your house tonight too, by the way. Absolutely. So nice of you. I yeah. mean, we didn't have a place here, so it was Hospitality awesome. is uh, what I do, so. <laughs> Lucky for us yeah. on every count. So thank you so yeah, much. It was absolutely. great meeting you. Thank you. And I talk to you, and I talk to you, and I talk to you, and I talk to you. And we love, we love, and we hate, we hate, and we tap and run straight. We try to relate. This is my breakthrough. Whoa. Said now, this is my breakthrough. Whoa. Oh man, this is my breakthrough.